you spent some time staring at your calculator, you may have noticed one curious looking symbol that looks like this. You played around with it by pushing a number, like 9, and then pushing this key. Your calculator spits out a massive number, like 362,880. Whoa, what is this mysterious button? What does this thing do? What your calculator is doing is engaging in what's called the factorial operation. In this video, I'm going to address your burning question. What even is a factorial? And why and how is 9 factorial 362,880? The factorial symbol is funny. It looks made up, and if you're not careful and you don't know what you're doing, you can mistake a factorial for someone just being really excited about the letter N. So what is a factorial and why is it useful? Put simply, N factorial is the product of sequential natural numbers, starting with N and multiplying by N minus 1, the next lowest natural number after N, and so on, all the way down to 1. For example, 3 factorial can be written as 3 times 2 times 1, also known as 6. So this should explain why 9 factorial is such a big number. We're taking 9, multiplying by 8, multiplying by 7, and so on, all the way down to 1. One of the most interesting and powerful applications of the factorial is in counting. And you're thinking, I can just count on my fingers. Why would I ever need to use a factorial? Now when I use the word counting, I'm not talking about counting to 20 on your fingers and toes. Counting refers to determining the number of elements in a set. Now the fundamental counting principle says, if one event can occur in m ways, and a second event can occur in n ways, then together, these two events can occur in m times n ways. We can demonstrate this principle using two examples. The first one involves independent events. An independent event is a situation where each trial does not depend on the trial before. If you roll a six-sided die twice, the outcome of the first roll does not affect the outcome of the second. I can count the number of outcomes possible for rolling two dice by multiplying the number of outcomes for the first roll by the number of outcomes for the second roll. We have six possible outcomes for the first die, the numbers one to six, and we have six possible outcomes for the second die. Using the fundamental counting principle, we can say that we have six times six possible outcomes, or 36. You can even count them by hand by writing out a chart like this. This is an example where using the fundamental counting principle saves you the time and energy of writing out all the possible combinations, and then using your fingers and toes, and someone else's fingers and toes, to count to 36. A dependent event is a situation where each trial does depend on the trial before. If we deal two cards from a standard deck of 52 cards without replacement, we know there are 52 possible outcomes for the first card. Unless I put that first card back in, which I'm not, because we're dealing without replacement, there should be one less outcome for the second card. Using the fundamental counting principle, I can say the number of ways I can deal two cards is 52 times 51, or 2,652 outcomes. Oh man, I can't imagine counting to 2,652 on fingers and toes. You need like, well, let's see, each person has 10 fingers and 10 toes. That means you need at least 132 people. So how does all of this relate to factorials? After all, in this example, we only multiplied 52 times 51, not 52 times 51 times 50 all the way down to 1. It turns out this scenario can also be modeled by something called a permutation. I've linked a video on permutations here as I can't really cover this topic in detail while being brief and staying on topic. We can use this formula to show that we're taking 52 factorial and dividing out 50 times 49 all the way down to 1 because we're really only interested in two cards, 52 outcomes for the first and 51 outcomes for the second. You can use the permutation formula to find how many ways R items out of a total of N items can be arranged, or in our case, if we deal two cards from a standard deck of 52 cards, how many ways can this happen? I'm hoping this video helped demystify the mysterious factorial operation, but more importantly, I hope this saved you the embarrassment of shouting N! If you found this video helpful in any way, like and subscribe for more mathematical chaos. And as usual, Thanks for watching.